Basically, this is a public meeting that's been called by the Granby Residents Association. Um, for those of you who don't know exactly who we are and what we are, we're a group that were unhappy with the uh, current proposals for the Granby Triangle. Uh, so we got ourselves together some 14 weeks ago, and we've been meeting regularly since then, um, and trying to take some action concerning the future of our community. Um, a couple of the things that we want to cover within this meeting are um, the, the actual report that the housing associations and the council have prepared between them um, concerning the future of the community. And also um, Anna and Dorothy will be reporting back on some of the sort of more current issues relating to our meetings with the council and um, other officials. Um, <laughs> Among the issues that we maybe discussed this evening was uh, it's a, the consultation process itself. We have made a number of complaints about it to uh, <coughs> members of the council, to Max Steinberg, who's the chair of the Housing Corporation, and to Michael Maunders, who's the chair of Council Housing. Um, and I think. Okay, well what I'm going to run through first, for people who've been to our regular meetings, you've heard all this, so this is for the benefit of anyone who hasn't been before, or maybe not for a few weeks. We raised a number of concerns about the actual consultation process. Um, I know that personally I wasn't happy with the approach on the doorstep, and quite a lot of our members have had complaints to make about that. Um, Issues were raised such as problems with the drains and sewers and also underground streams. Now we have in fact contacted North West Water and I've got a letter from them clearly stating that there isn't any problem with the drains or sewers in the ground area and also stating that they hadn't had any contact with any housing people at that point. Um, the underground streams do exist but they appear to only affect a very small number of properties at the end of um, Arundel, Eversley and Cordor at the Mulgrave and Princess Avenue end and that certainly isn't really a reason for total demolition. Obviously we appreciate that the affected houses will have to be demolished and we're not blocking that move at all. We also felt there was a serious lack of information given out during the process. Uh, there was no information really at all offered to shops and businesses and for a lot of people <coughs> this is the sole income, I think it's an important issue that needs looking at. There was also no real information for owner occupiers. We have been told that both these issues are still being looked at but we still haven't got any firm, you know, written evidence of exactly what looking at means. We still, we tonight can't tell you anything about shops or owner occupiers. Um, there's also the case of there's going to be a shortfall of housing. Now, we don't know who is not going to get offered a new property in the area or where these people are likely to be relocated. Another issue that we've um, uncovered is that Peter Lilly, who is, I believe, the uh, Minister for uh, Social Security, is currently reviewing housing benefits. Now, later on this year, there's going to be a ceiling limit put on housing benefits, which means that people on benefits won't receive the
is illegal. There are laws stating that information like that must be made public. Um, we have informed Max Steinberg that we are actually going to the parliamentary ombudsman over this issue because big decisions have been Currently in very bad condition, I've been told stories of horrific dam overrun with rats. <coughs> now, I've heard some really horrific stories. Now I'm not obviously going to deny these people a better standard of living, but I'm not convinced in all cases that the houses need to be demolished to achieve a better standard of living. If you're living in rented accommodation and it's not in proper condition, livable condition, you're not happy with, you've got several legal ways of getting that situation put right. There's a housing association ombudsman, there's the local government ombudsman which covers council properties. You can see a solicitor. So, and we would be more than happy to help anybody who's in that situation get their complaints heard and try and get those repairs done. Because people shouldn't be living in substandard accommodation. There's just no excuse for it, not in these days. Um, if people are waiting for a transfer, I've also spoke to quite a lot of people who've been on transfer lists for a really unacceptable length of time, as we're talking months and years. That's not right either. They, these people have a legal obligation to rehouse people. Again, if there's anything we can do to assist, we can lobby politically, locally, we can get local organisations involved. If we can help people to get rehoused <coughs> where they want to be, that's what we want to do. We're not just standing up here and saying, we want our homes kept, we can't be on demolition. We're trying to set up a residence organisation to represent the views of as many people <coughs> as possible. And in time, if we're able to make to get some funding and stuff in, we'd also like to tackle slightly less important issues such as street cleaning, because the streets are getting swept regularly, the bins getting emptied properly, the back entries getting cleaned out properly. Street lighting doesn't work in half the streets half the time. There's a problem with rats in the area. We want to try and address all of these issues so that for everyone who goes in the triangle, whatever happens, we've all got a better standard of living. So towards those ends. We're currently drafting a constitution, which is basically a document stating that you're an organisation. It's quite a long legal document. When that's finished, we will be a recognised organisation and we'll be able to go for proper funding from a number of organisations. So once we get that going, we'll have more resources to do a lot of the things that I've just been talking about. Um, that's briefly a summary of the complaints that we've raised and also some of the things that we'd like to try and do as an association. Um, I was going to ask Bobby Mohammed, who's our treasurer, to give a brief financial report, but I haven't actually had a chance to speak to Bobby, so it's not very fair to dump that on him right now. So if I may, I'll give a brief financial report back to date. Um, unfortunately, there have still been a few problems with the bank account. Uh, we do have a cheque for £100 from an anonymous source in Manchester. <coughs> so we'll be opening the account with £100. I've also been promised uh, a donation from another one of our members, I believe, of about £50. And of course, there's our weekly takings, which currently stands at £93. Not in the tonight. So we've, we've, once the account's open, we'll have about £250. That's going to enable us to buy stationery, get stamps for people. If people want to write their own letters and complain, we can supply them with the stamps and stationery. We've also got the information who it is you should be complaining to. So that's something to look forward to in the next few weeks. Um, yeah. I, I'd just like to raise the issue of the report that um, we, we, is now actually available. And Tracy Gore, who's sitting at the back there, does have a couple of copies. Hopefully, um, we'll be able to get some more of these by next Wednesday's meeting, or we can have these photocopied so that everyone can have a copy of this. Um, 
But basically, we met, despite the fact that it says the final report on the consultation process, we did in fact meet with Max Steinberg um, Friday of last week, and he has now said to us that he doesn't feel that the consultation process is complete, despite the fact that previously it was, you know, always going to be a six-week consultation process with a report coming out. He now says that he sees the need for a partnership to come together between existing community organisations, the housing associations, and ourselves, right? Um, now, that, if you like, is rather a large turnaround on the, the previous position. Previous to now, it's always been, well, let's wait for the report and see what is being said by it. Um, he does seem to recognise now that they can't really move forward without us. There's enough of us for, the, for us to have made them take some sort of notice now. So he wants to continue meeting with us to discuss um, possible ways of at least getting around some of the problems. Now my impression of what he has actually been coming across with is that he basically wants to start negotiating, um, particularly with those people that own their own properties. You know what I mean? Now whether he wants to negotiate the, he has mentioned a possible partial demolition. Now obviously for owner occupiers, if there's only a partial demolition, that's going to leave some people very happy and other people very unhappy. So we've actually said nothing about this. We've just said, you know, our, our actual members will have to be consulted about this as and when it comes along. But there does seem to be, now, they want to speak to us. They've realised that they can't just go over our heads and ignore us. Do you know what I mean? They, they seem to want some sort of working partnership to actually take place now. Um, exactly how they want that to work and what issues they want to discuss is still not clear. But they do want to have dialogue with us ongoing. Uh, what's partial diminishing? Um, it could mean anything from them only taking the minimum number of properties to them taking roughly half what they want to take. Um, so so it, instead of them knocking down everything between Eversley and Beaconsfield, they might take only the top of the streets, only the bottom of the streets. They may only take Eversley and leave the others. That, they're not really being clear about it, but what they are saying is that they realise that there is grounds for us to have a working partnership with them to at least discuss the future. Thank you. So, we don't want that though. <clears throat> we had a, a meeting uh, two years ago and the council agreed to take 11 houses from 1 to 11 in the bottom of order and uh, three more houses and how come they want to take half of this here and half of that there? They're trying to con us off. Well, I mean, wouldn't wear that. Yeah, my, my I can stick to what the council said. Because at first, I'm, I'm money talking, mm -hmm. at first in, in the meeting in the town hall, you was abroad and you and your missus was abroad. The three thousand association people stand up there and was waving his paper and he was showing us graphics of the, what they want and he says, no way are we going to do these houses over. You, he, he tell us, you take it or leave it and your rents will be 90 to 120 pounds. So I don't know what yeah, that smart thing they're coming with the fool of the thing with that. The issue of no, um, the issue of no refurbishment north of Beaconsfield Street is one that I've been pursuing quite sort of fervently with Max Steinberg, the chairman of the housing corporation. And what he has said to me at this point um, is that he, he he didn't at that meeting that you're referring to now. He did make a policy decision, or he had he did stand up and say there is no money for properties north of Beaconsfield Street. Since then, we've discovered that any agency such as the Housing Corporation that makes a public policy and states it like that, they have to give us the information that led to that policy. The information that informed that policy must be provided. Now, I, when I met with him on Friday, I did say to him, I demand that information, and if you don't give it to me, I will be right to the Parliamentary Ombudsman, uh, at which time he said he would have a letter out to me a week, Monday just gone. Um, which at least would give me a firm date of when that information would be available. <coughs> because this is it, they seem to just stand up and say, we're not doing this. When we said to them that we wanted the information, they said it was in packs that were very, very difficult to understand. We wouldn't be able to understand. Oh, well, that really? <laughs> well, I, I did point out to them that I could get a solicitor, an accountant, and a housing expert to look at them all independently and understand them for me. Or I could read them and ask them questions about them? anything that we didn't understand. Yeah. But there is a general reluctance now. That one issue seems to be something that we're making ground on. 
because basically they've never released the information despite the fact that that statement, that meeting was in February, I think, February. Yeah, of this year. Well, we've made repeated requests for the information that supports that policy and it has not been forthcoming. So we've, we've given them up until next Monday to give us a date when that information will be available. And then again, we'll be going over the heads direct to the parliamentary ombudsman and having an investigation launched in central government about it. Okay, part of what we've also done because, I mean, a number of the issues that we're raising, we feel are important. A number of the issues we're raising are legally very significant. So, following on with these meetings, we have been contacting both local and national politicians. We've written to Sir George Young, who's the Minister for House and the Government. I haven't had a response from him yet, but I understand it normally does take about five weeks to get a letter back from him, and it's only been three to four now, so hopefully we'll get back from him soon. We have had a letter back from John Battle, who's the Labour spokesman for housing. He's been very supportive, although he does suggest that we try and motivate our local councillors and MPs to do something. Now, I have repeatedly contacted Patrona Ashley, Gideon Benthoven and Peter Tyrell, who are our three councillors. I've written to them all three times and I've had no response. They're gangsters, they're Which speaks for itself. I personally... Oh, I Sorry. I apologise to Peter Tyrell, I haven't met him You may have written to me, but I'm assuming I only have two letters. One was for the reason for the reason yeah. it was cancelled, and one was for the But I've written to you, and I've had an acknowledgement of the letter. I wrote to you, and you're from the Okay, well, I, I apologise to Peter Tyrell. I just wanted to ask some questions, sir. Um, <coughs> I mean, the inquiry made, the assumption the Housing Association had given us that the only problem is that they're Well, uh, one of the issues that we've been trying to raise throughout this campaign is basically the fact that what the housing associations have done, associations have done, in our opinion, is they've actually said to people, you know, people who want new houses because their houses are in need of repair, people who want transfers out of the area, have basically been told that this plan is a means to an end. If you want your new house, vote yes to demolition. Now, what we're saying is. People have a right, a statutory right to decent housing, they have a statutory right to, to the right kind of accommodation, but it doesn't mean that their existing property <coughs> has to be demolished. Yeah, I mean, Sorry, I, 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 I remember this because I was actually quite heavily involved in the consultation process and I have to disagree with what uh, you've just said there. In terms of the consultation process, what we actually said to our tenants was what we said to everybody, which we explained what the housing association proposals were, what we thought, um, the, the same fact that you know, you've all seen, we went through them with everybody. We didn't say to them, this is the only way you're going to get a transfer to your piece of it. And we did not say to them, this is the only way your house No, okay, I, I take the point, Tracy, you didn't actually make them yeah. statements, but one of the but statements, you just said, one of the statements that was consistently made is either this plan goes ahead or it will stay pretty much the same as it has been. Yeah. And that, and that for people take this, take this or leave it out your home. We're taking the houses anyway. So don't give us no crap. Don't give us crap. It was in my house. And the same place. Take this. Can we just have a point of order? I think the point that I was trying to make, Tracy, although the quote that I, I made wasn't specific to any individual housing officer, was that the implication was this plan goes forward or things on Granby remain as they are now. Well, everybody who's here is well aware of the fact that we can't leave things remaining as they are now with dozens of empty properties per street. No, but, but it can be done up yet. Yeah, but, 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 but it is, in fact, the policy... They took enough of us. I know, I, know, I know you're MIH, but it is in fact the policy of LHT not to actually improve any properties and to break them up. And it's segregated also in the north. I think they segregated also in the north. Can I just say to Peter Tyrrell that even the, MI, the Housing Association's own report shows, even though we disagree with the way that whole thing has been packaged, it shows that...